Hello! In this video, we will learn about panel configuration, wiring, and precautions that apply to H100 panels. This is the inverter panel with H100 installed. Inside the panel, there is an inverter and various electrical devices. The front of the panel consists of an inverter, a molded case circuit breaker, a transformer, and an EMI filter. The back of the panel consists of a DVDT filter and an AC reactor. The following is the electrical connection diagram of the inverter panel. Let me explain the devices installed at the input and output of the inverter. MCCB MCCB protects the circuit between the power line and the inverter to prevent secondary accidents caused by overcurrent or short circuit. MC the MC and overload controls the circuit on and off with electric power to drive or stop the load. It also protects the load by detecting overload. EMI filter. The circuit inside the EMI filter consists of reactors and capacitors. It is a device that absorbs and controls high frequency and noise flowing into the input-output lines of power. AC Reactor The inside of the AC reactor is composed of reactors. It applies to the primary side based on three-phase rectification circuits. Compared to normal current waveforms, the waveform improves smoothly with the installation of the AC reactor. It also helps to suppress harmonic waves and improve power factor. DVDT filter. The DVDT filter is installed on the inverter output. It is a device that protects the motor from the transient surge voltage generated by the IGBT element inside the inverter. The waveform of voltage and current is improved depending on the filter installation. Installing the DVDT filter extends the motor life and improves the reliability of the system. Let's look at ground wiring. Use a green line for ground wires. Ground the line connected to the inverter ground terminal at the bottom of the panel. Use the appropriate wire for ground wires. Refer to the table in the manual to select the thickness of the wire correctly. When you open the inverter cover, there are control terminals at the top and power terminals at the bottom. On the left side of the power terminals, there are R, S, and T terminals, which are used to wire the input power. Connect the three-phase power to the R, S, and T terminals. If you look to the right, there are terminals U, V, and W for the inverter output terminals. These are for the motor output terminal. Here, we will wire the inverter input-output terminals. The input and output terminals of the power terminals use crimp-type terminals with insulation caps. The crimp-type terminals allow easy connection with wires to avoid incomplete connections. Wire the input and output terminals. Tighten the terminal to screw to the prescribed torque. Failure to tighten the screws may result in short circuits and product failures. Please check wire thickness and screw torque regulations in the H100 user's manual. Connect the output side terminals U, V, and W in the correct order. Incorrect connection may cause the motor to rotate in the opposite direction. The following is the control terminal wiring. The input and output terminals of the control terminals 
are also wired using crimp type terminals with insulation caps. For control wires, it is recommended to use a shield type twisted pair cable. Let's learn about potentiometer wiring. The potentiometer has three pins. The three pins are composed of VCC, VOUT, and ground. By changing the position of pin 2, the resistance is changed to vary the output voltage. The potentiometer adjusts the resistance value by varying the position of the V out. Depending on the potentiometer, the positions of numbers 1 and 3 may vary. Wire the VCC pin to the VR, V out to the V1, and the ground to the CM. Each time you adjust the potentiometer, a voltage between 0 and 10 volts is entered into the inverter. Let's check if the signal of the wired potentiometer comes through the inverter keypad. Press the mode key to go to the DRV group. Scroll down to DRV7 to set the frequency source. Set the frequency source to V1. In group 5 is a V1 monitor status. This is used to monitor the magnitude of the voltage input to V1. Verify that the value of the V1 monitor increases when the volume resistance is turned clockwise and decreases when it is turned in the opposite direction. Let's look at wiring for analog current inputs. Wire analog current inputs I2 and CM. The inverter receives input of DC4 to 20 mA. Let's set the command frequency to analog current. Press the mode button to move to the DRV group. Set the frequency reference source number 7. Select I2 to set the frequency command to 4 to 20 mA. To monitor the current value, go to the in group. The I2 monitor status parameter is in group 50. This shows the magnitude of the current entering the I2 terminal, used to monitor the size of the current input. This is the control section located on the front of the panel. At the bottom of the panel keypad, there is a potentiometer called the speed reference. Adjust this to change the frequency. On the right side of the control panel, there is a lamp to check the operation status of the inverter. When the inverter is stopped, the stop lamp turns on, and the run lamp turns on during inverter operation. Let's look at the regenerative braking unit, regenerative braking resistance. The regenerative braking unit is called the dynamic brake unit, DBU. When the regenerative voltage reaches a certain range, it acts as an internal IGBT to send energy to the resistance. Depending on the inverter, DBU must be built in or installed separately. Regenerative braking resistance is called DBR. DBR is a device that consumes the voltage passed through the DBU as heat. The following graph shows the variation in DC link voltage over time when regenerative voltage occurs. As regenerative voltage occurs, the DC link voltage increases. When the DC link voltage reaches a certain range, the DBU is controlled to send energy to the resistance. The following is the basic wiring diagram for the braking resistance and braking unit. Wire it according to the following illustration. Connect the inverter P1 terminal and P2 terminal. Connect the P2 terminal of the inverter to the P terminal of the DBU. Connect the N terminal of the inverter to the N terminal of the DBU. Connect the B1, B2 terminal of the DBU to ends of the DBR. 
The braking unit G terminal is the ground terminal and connects to the ground. Depending on the applied motor capacity, the appearance and terminal arrangement of the DBU may vary. These are the precautions for wiring DBR. The surface temperature of the DBR can sometimes rise above 100 degrees Celsius. There is a risk of burn when contacting brake resistance, so be extra careful. Be sure to use a heat-resistant wire of 600 volts, 105 degrees Celsius or higher. The DBR must use a resistance with a built-in temperature sensor to prevent fire. Let's look at the precautions for wiring. When an inverter is used, leakage current occurs due to the noise reduction filter and the characteristics of the IGBT element. To prevent electrical shock, make sure to ground the motor and inverter. In asymmetric ground structures where input power is delta, EMC filters are not recommended for use because it may cause electric shock and inverter damage. Please refer to the manual for details. For the 200 volt series, the ground resistance below 100 ohms is recommended. The 400 volt series, the ground resistance of less than 10 ohms is recommended. When running an electric motor without an inverter, Power has an inductive load characteristic due to inductance of the coil inside the motor. In this case, adding a phase advance capacitor to the system improves the power factor. If an inverter is added to an induction motor that was used for direct start, a problem may occur due to the use of a phase advance capacitor in parallel. If the inverter is installed behind the phase advance capacitor, the power factor will be worse due to the large capacitor inside the inverter. If the inverter is installed in front of the phase advance capacitor, the phase advance capacitor may be burned due to the high frequency voltage output from the inverter. There are instances where the inverter is controlled by measuring the voltage and current injected into the motor. Power change due to the phase advance capacitor may cause malfunction during motor control. Therefore, do not install a phase advance capacitor on the inverter output side. The MC is used to apply or disconnect power when designing the drive panel. Depending on the power conditions and the length of the wire, installation of the MC of the output should be considered carefully. There is a parasitic inductance between the inverter and the motor by wiring. If the distance is tens to hundreds of meters, the inductance will increase. Surge occurs due to MC opening and closing on the actual track. As the parasitic inductance increases, the surge voltage increases, theoretically resulting in a surge voltage of several kilovolts. Therefore, when configuring a sequence, you must first cut off the inverter output and secondly design it so that MC can be opened or turned off after a stoppage of the motor. When wiring the inverter input and output lines, separate the power and control wires from each other. If the wiring distance is close, there may be an error in signaling. If power lines and control lines intersect inevitably, cross them vertically. Thank you 